Welcome to this series on how to build Android apps. Um, my name's Jez, Jez Whitworth, and I regularly host coding workshops for uh, primary school and secondary school pupils um, after creating my business First Coding four years ago. And the app building workshops are proving very popular. So I thought I'd give you an introduction today. There are going to be three lessons in this series. <clears throat> the first is going to be an introduction about how we use the coding platform <clears throat> to build our applications. The second lesson will be on actually building an example uh, application. And the third and final one in the series will be how to package up your app, run it on your phone, and also how you submit your creations to the Google Play Store. So let's begin. we are going to be using uh, something called App Inventor. And you can easily do a quick Google search or use the URL um, uh, shown on screen. And it will take you to a web page like this. Now, App Inventor is a free service. You only need a Google account to uh, start uh, creating with it. So it's free to use, and it's also block-based programming as well. So even if you're not very confident with coding, um, you can still crack on and start building your own applications for Android devices. You'll see at the top, there is a link for uh, Create App. So when you click on that, it'll ask you to log in, and it'll present you with a very... Uh, um, uh, a, a new project as you see on, on screen. So let's break these uh, sections down. So in the middle of the screen, you can see a uh, phone, okay? And this is where we're gonna drag all our different elements in and start designing what your application is gonna look like from the front end. To the left, we have all the components, which I'll go through shortly. And on the right here, we have the settings for each of those components. And I'll step through some of the uh, more commonly used ones, but also some of the more exciting and creative um, uh, elements and components as well. So App Inventor works in two, two parts. The first part is the front end, what it's gonna look like on screen. And the second part is what's going on in the back end. That's where all the logic, all the programming uh, takes place. So we're gonna look at the front end first. How do we uh, start designing an application using App Inventor? Well, as I said, on the left-hand side, we have all the components available and they're divided up into really helpful sections. The first section is titled user interface. So here we find all the buttons, uh, dates, sliders, and everything else in between. And they're pretty self-explanatory. If you're confused as to what each component does, there is a little help button available as well. So clicking on that, <clears throat> it'll give you a brief explanation of what that component does and with an option to click for more information if you wanted to um, delve into it in a bit more depth. So we have things like buttons, <clears throat> date pickers. Uh, we, can, we come here to insert images, for example, labels, Labels are where we want writing to appear in the screen, and we'll explore that in the next lesson. Further down, we have an option called layout, and this is, this is how we can arrange things on screen. So we can arrange uh, things horizontally, so we might want a row of buttons going across the screen, or we might want to arrange them vertically. We might want the buttons arranged on top of one another. So we have horizontal arrangements and vertical arrangements available. The really exciting bit about App Inventor is the media, okay? Because we're coding for phones, we can actually hook into all those sensors, all those goodies that are in our phones. So for example, we can use uh, or take advantage of the camera, the video camera, the, the actual camera to take stills. We can use the sound uh, play, um, speakers in there to play sounds. We can record. Um, we can easy, easily uh, even hook into speech recognizers so you can talk into it and it'll translate that into text and vice versa as well. We can actually, tell, we can actually got, uh, use components to speak the text back to us. And again, 
we'll use a few of those in our next lesson when we come to build our first app. We have a section for drawing an animation if we wanted to. Um, it's not terribly sophisticated when it comes to animation, but it gets the job done. So if you wanted some basic movement, maybe you're designing a game where you're tilting a ball around a screen, for example, this will be the place to do it. Another nice feature is we have maps available. Every smartphone comes with Google Maps and we can hook into that as well. So if you want to build a, a map application, for example, um, you can use this section here so we can actually pull up maps, navigate maps, even draw, even draw bespoke boundaries and lines and shapes on our maps using this section here. The sensors is where it starts to really get interesting. We can use the accelerometer, we can use the clock, we can use the light sensors. Um, uh, we even got options to use um, pedometers and compasses if we, if we so want to, which can really add some interesting elements to your projects. We also have a social section where we can actually take advantage of the fact that smartphones are our phones. So we can actually code our programs to make full use of the phone capabilities, the sending of um, text messages, and even receiving calls and text messages within your program itself. We can also hook into Twitter and also um, uh, uh, other social media um, platforms too. We can create databases. So we can create databases locally on, the, on, our, on our device. So the data is only held in, in our device, or we can store our data centrally in the cloud for, for any, any, other, um, any other devices to access. Uh, and we've got like web viewers, and we can also uh, start other applications on your phone as well. So the possibilities are literally endless. I kid you not. Once you know the basics of App Inventor, the only limitation is your imagination. And I know that sounds incredibly cheesy, but it's the truth. Um, once you take time to learn the basics of App Inventor and you'll be flying in next to no time. So let's have a look at uh, the layout, for example. Okay, so I'm going to the layout section and uh, we have uh, horizontal and vertical arrangements. So I'm gonna go uh, drag a vertical arrangement in like so. And it plonks it just randomly on the screen, usually in the top corner. And it's up to us to specify where that arrangement is going to go. If you look to the right, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, all the features associated with that um, layout. So we might want, if we click on the height, we can tell it to fill parent. So filling the parent means it'll, it'll, max, it'll, it'll expand to fill the whole screen, maximize all that space available to us. And the same thing with width. If we say fill parent, it'll, it'll fill as much as it can width wise. So by setting height and width to fill parent, we can then um, we can then ensure that our arrangement is filling the whole screen. We can also specify the things that we put in it. Are they going to be arranged to the left or the right or the middle? OK, so I'm going to specify that everything is arranged in the middle. <coughs> OK, now if I go to user interface, I'm going to create a simple button that when we press it, it displays a message to say hello. So I'm going to drag a button just literally picking it up with my mouse and dragging it in. And as you can see, it's arranged itself in the middle of the screen. And that's because we told it to arrange itself vertically in the middle, didn't we? And we told it to arrange it in the middle on horizontally too. Um, and what we can do, if we look on the right, we have all the, um, all the settings to do with that button. So font size, height and width of that actual button, what it actually says as well. So I'm going to change it just to say, press me, press me, okay? <clears throat> and when we press it, as I said, we are going to get some text to appear on the screen, okay? Um, so we're going to need a label. So I'm just grabbing my label uh, um, component over and I've um, positioned it above 
the button. OK, it says text for label one. So I'm going to change that just to um, just to be a blank. OK, so my label isn't displaying anything at the minute. It will display something when I press the button. Now, that's the front end done. So if you remember, the front end is how your application is going to look. We click on the blocks. It takes us into the back end. This is where we start coding the functionality of those components we've dragged in and arranged. OK, and as you can see, we have all the basics here, a bit like Scratch. If you're familiar with Scratch, um, they're sort of laid out in a similar fashion. We have all our ifs in the control. We have the logic section. Uh, we can create, uh, we've got math section, text, and we can create lists and all sorts of other lovely things. The additional components that we've dragged in and using, they will appear here. So as you can see, I've got my label and I've got my button. If I click on button, you can see we've got all these different blocks available. And I advise you just to go through and just familiarize yourself with, with, with a few of them. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, and as I said, there's always help available. So if you hovered over one, um, a little, a little um, a box will pop up to um, just give a brief description of what each block does. The one we want is the top one, when button one is clicked. So any coding blocks that we put in here will only run when our button one is clicked. So what's going to happen? Well, if we go to the label, we have all the different blocks associated with that label. And we've got complete control over that label and other components from within our coding block. So if we wanted to write code that changed the size of it or change the color, we, we've got the control to do that. But for this example, we are going to change the text. So I'm going to look for, there we go, set label one text to. So I'm going to drag that out and just clip it in like so. OK, notice that there's a space at the end. Um, it's like it's missing a jigsaw piece. And this jigsaw piece that we're going to add will tell, um, will, will tell uh, that label what to display. Because it's, we're going to display writing, we're going to head over to the text column. OK, and as you can see, we have access to all these different text blocks. So for example, if you wanted to join different text elements together to make one sentence, we can use the, the, the text join, for example, um, and, and all sorts. The one we're after is the top one, just a bog standard text block. And in here, we can write whatever we want, whatever we would like to display on that label. So I'm going to say, hello, this is my first um, app. OK, so as we step through the logic, um, we can see that when button one is clicked, it's going to run this code and the code that's going to run is going to change the text on label one to the words, hello, this is my first app. There is an emulator, so you don't have to necessarily load it into your phone, which I'll show in lesson three and how we do that. You can actually um, run it in sort of like a, a virtual mode um, if you so wish. Um, but the key to App Inventor is being able to visualize how things um, behave um, in your mind, as it, as it were. And I think that's the secret to, to, to successful coding, be it being, being able to step through events in your head and visualize the outcomes. If there's something not quite right um, or you want to add more elements, we can quickly switch back to the front end, add more in, switch back to the blocks and add more logic. So it's you can you always got that um, opportunity to go back and forth, making your change and making tweaks. So after you've tested something and you found that something mm, doesn't quite work very well, we can then switch back and maybe we want the button above the label. So I'm, I can switch the order around or switch the arrangement around. OK, one thing I have noticed, which I really, um, really like to do um, straight off when I create a new project, is rename this title. OK, so if I click on the screen element here, OK, this, the, these settings here represent the settings for the whole application, as it were, as a whole. It's like an umbrella, umbrella settings. 
Okay, and I'm going to rename that screen one to something a bit more appropriate, maybe um, uh, demo application, for example. Okay, Ooh. there we go, demo application. And when I change, you can see it appears there. If you don't want a title, we actually have a uh, title visible tick box, so we can just untick it. Okay. The settings are really simple to understand. It's just a case of exploring them. If I was to talk you through every single one, it would literally take me weeks. But hopefully I, um, I've given you uh, a little introduction into how to use App Inventor. And in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we construct our very first app. It's going to be a random ideas generator. So taking the principles that we've just looked at with the button, we're going to um, generate, uh, sorry, build an app that when we click a button, it's going to pick a random idea. So maybe if you're an artist and stuck for something to draw, you've got, you got a bit of um, <clears throat> um, artist block or a, um, a writer's block. If you're a writer, we can click a button and it will give us a few suggestions on how we can, uh, uh, on what we can write about or what we can draw or paint or something like that. Um, I've actually got this app in the App Store and although it's incredibly simple, it's one of my most popular apps. So um, yeah, I, 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 know it, uh, I know it proves popular with a lot of people. So let's learn how to make an, um, one of those applications in our next lesson. Yeah, so that's a brief introduction into the free um, App Inventor platform where we learn to code apps using uh, coding blocks.